In this video, I'm going to show how you can embed Stripe payment forms in your Bubble app. You'll see here I'm looking at a marketplace, and if I go to purchase this classic blue jumper and click on the purchase button, instead of being navigated away to an external site, I'm actually having this Stripe payment form embedded in my Bubble app. So really useful if you are processing payments with Stripe Connect. In this video, I'm going to be using the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin. It is a Cran for Tech plugin that makes it really easy to integrate Stripe Connect into your Marketplace app. I'm really going to focus on the flow involved in embedding the payment forms. So what happens when you click on a purchase button? I do have another video that goes over how you can integrate the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin, get it set up on board merchants and all of that. I'll link to that below, but for today, just really focusing on embedding the payment form. Now I want to take a look at the workflow associated with this purchase button because the standard way of processing payments with Stripe on Bubble is you create a checkout session, which we're doing here in step two, and then you navigate to an external website. I'm aware there's another couple of steps here, but again, not going to delve into that part of processing transactions today. And what happens if you use these two steps is that you're going to create a checkout session and then you navigate to that checkout session. But you can see here it's being hosted on a Stripe page, checkout.stripe.com. But Stripe have introduced a new feature recently that actually allows you to embed payments in your app. So that's what we're going to do. And it's really simple. We just need to change a couple of things around this Stripe Connect Create Checkout Session action. The first two is we don't actually need to access and cancel the URL anymore. You can leave them in there if you want. They're not going to do any harm, but I'm going to delete them. Quickly going over some of the other fields. Stripe Account ID is a Stripe account associated with a merchant person who is selling a good or service on your platform. Platform fee is what proportion of the transaction you're taking. You're running the marketplace, you're going to take a split. In this case, I'm taking 20%. Price is the price in cents. That's why I'm multiplying it by 100. Quantity, how many of each item you're selling. Currency, product name, on behalf of, I won't go into detail now, but the key fields are right down here. At the very end here, we have embedded checkout session. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from no to yes. You will need to put in a return URL. This is going to be the URL that the user is navigated back to after they've completed the checkout session that's going to be embedded in your bubble app. Now, because we're no longer navigating to an external website, we need to change this last step in our payment flow as well. Rather than opening an external website, what we need to do is we need to design a page somewhere else in our bubble app and then send the user to that page. And what I've done is I've created a page here called Checkout. And you'll see at the moment it's just a blank page. We do have the nav bar here, but there's nothing actually on the page. But what we can do now is because we have the Stripe Connect Marketplace plugin installed, we can go down here and we have this embedded checkout session element. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to drop it into my application. I'm going to allow it to take up the full width and the full height of the screen that's available. Just get rid of those min width and min heights. And the idea is we want to navigate our user to this page. Now, we're going to do this, and it's not going to work first time, but I think it's good just to show you exactly what's happening. So let's go back to our product page first of all, which is over here. And for the very last action in this workflow, we're going to go to navigation, go to page, and go to page checkout. Now, you'll see here the data to send it's showing up as a required field. And that's because I've set the type of data on the checkout page to be equal to transaction. Just to take a quick look at that, we'll click on the checkout page. Type of content is transaction. This is the data type I'm using to save down all details of the transaction. And it's basically there to keep track of everything relating to payments with Stripe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our product page. And on that workflow action there, I'm going to send the transaction that I'm creating in step one. Creating a transaction, creating my checkout session, updating some of the fields in the transaction. And again, not going to go into full details here, video link below with all that. And then going to go to the checkout page. So let's see how that looks at the moment. Click purchase. We're getting to this page, but nothing is loading. And the reason nothing is loading is we also need to run a workflow action on page load to get this embedded checkout session loading. 
So I'm going to go back to my checkout page and I'm going to go to the workflow tab and I'm going to say when page is loaded, we are going to go to under plugins, we have load embedded checkout session. I only have one embedded checkout session element on my page, so I'm going to set that as the target element. And then client secret, this is quite a sensitive piece of data. I don't recommend saving it down to your database, but you can use it to load the embedded checkout session. And if we look again at this page, you'll see we have our unique transaction ID up here because we sent the type of data transaction to this page. And what we need to fill out this field here is if we go into insert dynamic data, get data from an external API, Stripe connect retrieve checkout session details, and then if we look here, we'll see there's a field under here called client secret. So that's what we need to get, but we need to tell it which checkout session ID to actually look up. And the way we do that is, is we actually use the type of data on this page, which is a transaction. And if we look at my database, you'll see that under transactions, I've saved down all these checkout session IDs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say current page transactions, checkout session ID. And this time, hopefully, when we purchase our jumper, we're again going to be brought to that checkout page. And you can see there it's loading up. I'm just going to pay for this really quickly and show you what happens in Stripe. So you can see the payment go through. Just remember that $50 number. Okay, Will Ferrell is purchasing that Christmas jumper. We're going to be sent back to our return URL. And I actually redirect this to a payment complete form just so you can get a nice message. And if we look at our Stripe dashboard under payments, we should see a $50 charge just went through. And you can see the customer was willfair.testmail.com. And if we look at collected fees, we should see that about 20% of that, which is $10, went to the platform itself with the remainder going to this merchant shop at cranfortech.com. So that's how you embed Stripe payment forms into your bubble app when you're using Stripe Connect. Just to say as well, if you're not using Stripe Connect, you don't have a marketplace, you just want to process kind of regular transactions without splitting it. I also have this Stripe checkout shopping cart plugin, which is just used for regular transactions uh, in a kind of shopping cart sense. You can also use embedded payment forms with this plugin. Hope all that's useful. If you have any questions, you can let me know below.